Hi, welcome back to the Spencer Firm. Uh, I wanted to, I know that I talked about discrimination cases and I wanted to give you more value. So I wanted to go a little deeper in. And uh, let me start by listing the types of discrimination because I know that a lot of you are wondering if you have the type of case that uh, you should pursue, okay? Uh, a lot of the cases that we cover are race, and I need to look because sometimes I leave some out, but uh, race, national origin, sex, which includes pregnancy and sexual orientation, disability, religion, age, and retaliation. Very important, a lot of people don't realize that retaliation is a claim in and of itself. Let me explain retaliation first. Now, retaliation is what it, what it means, right? Retaliation, is you, you did something and as a result, your employer in this case is retaliating against you. Well, what is key here on whether or not you have a claim is what is it that you did that caused the retaliation? And let me explain. The retaliation in general, when we're talking about discrimination, there are other laws that protect retaliation for other things, right? There may be an agency or, or an employer who has a policy or manual that says bullying or, or harassment by itself is, is wrong and that they also do not tolerate retaliation. That's a separate case, but today we're talking about discrimination by way of Title VII and the agencies, local and federal, that handle these claims, okay? And let me also tell you something really important you should know. There are statute, statutes of limitations for these claims. I can't tell you all of the statute of limitations because I am not licensed to practice everywhere in the United States. I'm licensed in Maryland and DC. I can tell you about those. I can also tell you about federal government, which typically is 45 days, but you wanna make sure that you know your agency's limit statute of limitations, meaning how much time do I have to file a claim from the date that I was wronged? And you wanna act fast because sometimes your claim expires and then you can't really do much about it. Or you're faced with trying to fight getting your claim in because of some expiration date, all right? So federal employees be very aware of these statute of limitations. Agencies may have even shorter time frames, um, depending on your agencies in general, 45 days, but I've seen and heard of less depending on different steps that you need to take. So be familiar with that. Um, if we are called or, or emailed, we may be able to look into that for you depending on your particular agency, or we may know. Um, now, in, in general, however, private employers or outside of the federal agencies, there is in Maryland 300 days to file with the EEOC, 300 days from the day that the event happened, okay? A lot of local agencies have basically six months, okay? 180 days. It varies, but the, the NDC actually has one year, but you want to not wait. You want to file these claims as soon as possible because there are so many looming deadlines and different aspects of these claims. And sometimes it takes longer to get the claims in. And so you want to make sure that you either contact a lawyer as soon as possible, or you file the claim and I say file the claim because you can file for free. Be very careful, however, make sure that you're articulating yourself carefully and clearly so that the agency accepts your case. Oftentimes, the Spencer firm gets calls from clients who want us to submit their claims for them because they want us to investigate and organize the claim to assure that it is accepted. And that is one of the main things that we do for clients with discrimination cases, is you wanna make sure that your case gets in. If you don't have a case, or we think you don't have a case, we'll let you know also, all right? Um, 
And that's important because you don't want to waste your time or energy, or you can get a second opinion, but it is just important, just as important to know the strengths and weaknesses of your claims. Okay. Now getting into it, retaliation. So what I wanted to say about retaliation, going, coming back, circling around, um, retaliation is, uh, here's an example, all right, of a good retaliation claim or a claim that uh, the Spencer firm or another employment lawyer would, would think is probably a good claim. And generally the courts, the agencies, okay? Uh, let's say that uh, someone, you know, person A uh, filed an internal complaint against their supervisor. The internal complaint says that they believe that their supervisor is treating African Americans worse than Caucasian workers. All right. I'm using this because it's a very common claim. However, we get calls of all types of discrimination, but let's just go with this example. So person A writes this complaint in and take note, I'm saying write because writing, there's evidence of it, right? There's evidence of it. So they have evidence that they filed something telling their employer that they feel that African-Americans are not being treated fairly in comparison to Caucasians, or they feel that there's more promotions happening with the Caucasian workers than, than black workers, right? Um, and so they make this known. Let's just say in this example that this person was wrong. Let's say uh, they were incorrect, but they genuinely believed it. And there was a few things, there were a few things that, that you could understand the appearance of it, but when you look further into it, hey, you know, person A, you're wrong. Well, retaliation is set up such that even if person A is wrong, they engaged in protected activity. So by sending the complaint in which they reasonably believed that there was unfair treatment, articulating that to their employer, puts them in a protected category. And that's the retaliation. This is just an example, the retaliation. So because they believe that there was race discrimination, right? It's tied to one of these categories that I listed at the beginning, race, national origin, gender, pregnancy, right? Okay. So this is connect. This is connected to that. The person doesn't have to be correct for them to be protected now by the law for retaliation. If the employer now terminates that person because they say you were wrong, you were wrong, we're letting you go. That is unlawful. And I don't know if too many people realize or know that that is unlawful. You cannot terminate someone for asserting a belief that there's a disparity. And a lot of time these laws are in place because they want to encourage people to come forward. They want to encourage people to bring forth their claims. You don't want people to not bring these claims up because there is going to be, or there are going to be times when it is happening and we want to correct this, right? That's ultimately the goal for these cases is we want everyone to be in a healthy workplace environment. We want fairness across the board. And so in this case for retaliation, um, that person has a claim you have a claim. Now, just because it happened doesn't always mean you can prove it. And this is what is valuable. Document, document, document. Please write things down. Have supportive information. Let's say you sent an email to your employer with the complaint or with your grievances where you're saying, I feel that, you know, uh, there's race, race discrimination, or I feel I'm being treated unfairly. Let's say you sent an email. Well, save that email, print it out because later on, if you get terminated and what happens on the, on the last, what happens on, on the termination date? A lot of times people are caught unaware. You don't know what's happening. Someone comes in, right? And this is what I've hear, heard what clients say. Someone comes in, help, let, let me get your, uh, you know, your keys, this information, this information, 
Uh, or they stand right there and say, all right, you know, we want a laptop back. We want our information back, right? They want all this information back. And a lot of times I've gotten calls from people that say, I had it on the computer or I had it here, but I don't have it anymore because they didn't print it out. They didn't capture it as an image. They didn't save it. We are in a technology age right now. So there's a lot that we can capture, okay, and save as evidence. So it's very important to do that. So with these cases, you want to make sure that there is some sort of evidence. If you don't have a paper trail, and not just a paper, but evidence that this person got it, right? It could be helpful that you have something. Here's what I gave them. Here's a copy of it. I hand gave it to them. Um, you know, that that's fine. Um, better is when well, there's evidence that this happened, this event. Because believe it or not, sometimes an employer said that didn't happen. I didn't get that. I don't know what they're talking about. Sometimes, not always, okay? Um, and so it's very important to have some sort of evidence. Another type of evidence to have are witnesses. But it's difficult sometimes to have witnesses in the workplace because your witnesses sometimes are still working there. And they don't want to get some sort of adverse action or discrimination or retaliation to happen to them as a result of being your witness. Now, I have had many cases where there are witnesses and some people come forward and I, I commend them, that's great. But there are more cases where the witnesses do not want to be named, they wanna be anonymous. And I've had people call and say, well, my witness is anonymous. How can that help you? It cannot help you at all. You're talking about law now. We're talking about filing a discrimination claim where everything is about evidence, 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 evidence. Can you prove it? Can you prove it? Can you prove it? So make sure that you have some information that you can prove. Now, there are some cases where you don't have to have the information and we can still prove it. Let me give an example because I don't want to discourage you from pursuing your rights. I just want to give you helpful information that will help you to prepare and have your ducks in a row. Okay. Now there are cases, let's say uh, unfair pay or Equal Pay Act cases or a case where uh, let's, let's stick with race where a certain races of people are being paid less than others. Well, we can get that evidence for you um, if you know, but you have to know this information, but we can get that. Uh, the lawyers can help uh, in getting that. Agencies can retrieve that information. If we have, you know, compile a list of the employees with your same position, you're not comparing yourself to kind of the director, you know, that, that wouldn't make sense if, if you are, uh, a, a supervised employee and you're saying you're paid less than your supervisor, right? That doesn't make sense. It has to be that you are being paid uh, less than equal counterparts. Also, there are cases where people say, well, I haven't been advancing. You know, there's a disparity in, in who they promote. That's another case that we can gather the information because we can get that um, at a later time, but you just want to make sure you're right because you don't want to spend money or have your lawyer. If, let's say your lawyer is taking your case contingency, which is not frequent. It's very hard to take a discrimination case contingency. You don't want your lawyer to spend countless hours uh, uh, working on your case only to find out that you were factually mistaken. You want to be sure about these things because when you're contacting the firm, there are resources, energy, and passion goes behind this. And we want to make sure that you know that this is happening. It's not a hunch. It's it's actually a thing. Okay. Um, those are, are some of the tips I would give. And I know I talked mainly about retaliation, but I did incorporate race in there, race discrimination, which should help you kind of have an understanding of the others. They're all analyzed pretty similarly, not exactly the same, but similarly, um, with the exception of, of disability. So age, and race and gender and national origin, for example, you know, if someone's being treated differently from others, or there's a policy in place that negatively impacts a certain type of people, uh, those are the types of cases where you have a claim. It sounds like you have a claim, but you also want to make sure that, as I said, for retaliation, the same thing, you want to make sure that you have evidence witnesses, or there's something 
that the lawyers can gather that will prove your claim. Okay. I hope that this session was valuable to you. Uh, please, please make sure that if you have a situation like this happening and you want to make a claim that you contact a lawyer sooner than later, or you file with the applicable agency sooner than later. Have a great day.